What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. What is good? We're back for a week two installment. The gang is all here. What up, fellas? Well, I'm Jay not Wayne hurt. Pico. Jay, I'm hurt. hurt. I'm not hurt. We, we might be the only. <laughs> we might be the only cast of characters that doesn't have a ACL tear or meniscus I'm, or. I'm Achilles. a little upset about a bad sexual episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not just no whamming, no bamming, no liar, 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 ma'am. DL, uh, one of the best Jim Carrey movies. For real. So we got Jay Wayne. What up, Jay Wayne? Oh, uh, having a blast. Week two, baby. Yeah. Let's do it. We got Big Co. What up, Big Co? Not a whole lot, bud. Um, KC. And we're going to take you through some week two action. Same kind of spiel as last week. Obviously, you know, it's week two. Not going to overreact, you know, anything super duper crazy or dive super deep into anything. You know, somewhere around week four or five, we'll really dive into some stuff and, and, you know, have some opinions of who who people are and who teams are and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but we're going to have fun and, and get into some uh, different talk this week. So you guys ready to roll? Let's do it. All right. Well, we're going to start off with what we think we might have learned, maybe. <laughs> um, Potentially. CMC. And Barkley go down. We learned that for sure. That's definitely that's a definite. That one had happened. Um, and we learned not to use a San Diego Chargers doctor for anything. Sure, you don't yeah. get that lung pop for nothing. Mm -mm. So those two go down. They're obviously the first and second pick of pretty much any rookie any draft that not not rookie draft any startup draft that you did redraft or dynasty. Um, if you have those guys in redraft, you know, you're probably a little SOL. That's probably not the best. It's going to be a tough road to recover from. Um, but, you know, in Dynasty, you might be able to recover, but you don't want to go selling either one of those guys for pennies on the dollar because you're chasing a quote-unquote championship. But for non-owners, mm -mm. this really opens up a, a window for the rest of the league. And, uh, you know, we can kind of go back to what I just said there in a minute, but like, if you were kind of a dynasty team that was maybe a little bit in the middle of the pack or, you you know, you thought, hey, I don't know if I can quite compete with the top end guys. There's one less top end guy. Are you trying to search around and maybe go a little more all in towards trying to get a championship this year? Because those are two. Obviously, Christian McCaffrey's not done for the year, but, you know, you're getting a, a big advantage. You know, I know like victory points wise in some leagues matter. So, you know, those guys aren't going to be on those teams getting victory points, all, all that kind of stuff. Sure. I mean, it's again, I, I say it, we always say this, it kind of roster dependent. Um, but that's a good point. Would if, if you didn't lose Saquon or Christian McCaffrey, um, and if you didn't lose Michael Thomas, it's a huge advantage for you, you know, right? Um, you just took some of those 30 point per week type guys out of your competition. Um, so that's that's a that's a good that's a good point. And if you if you think you were close. And maybe that one team, maybe definitely Michael Thomas, Saquon Barkley on the same team. That guy's probably going to go straight downhill from here. It's it's hard to say. I've 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 taken my lumps in the past by going all in on the championship. Sure, it's, it's, it's a nice roll. It really is. It, there's I like uh, I I st who doesn't want to make a championship push. Who won't who won't sacrifice a little something for the future? You know, last year in, yeah. a, in in one of our home leagues, I traded away a second and a third round pick before the season started to get Damian Williams. Damian Williams helped me intermittently between the seasons sometimes, but my at, at times with my team ended up getting hurt all over the place, and I had an early 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 draft pick, which meant I had an early second round pick, and that was worth pretty much worth of a first round pick in, in any other rookie draft. And you don't and even I, have Damian Williams this year because it's have it. crazy. You know, so you, I, 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 I've gotten, gotten bitten in the, in the butt a couple times by mortgaging the future for this year's 
championship because I have a good enough team to win a championship. Yeah. But we all know you need a little luck at the end of the day, the end of the day within weeks 14, 15, 16 anyway. Yeah. So I would say you can typically you know, make some decent luck with a guy like McCaffrey and, and Barkley, but sure. Yeah. You, if, you certainly do need. One like, thing I, I would add to that is that tread lightly on, on pushing too hard for the cha- this year's championship. Yeah. If your team's, if your team's blowing everybody out every week, then you want to push and try to keep it that way. If you just lost one of these studs, I understand. Um, but if you're just, if you're competing with five other dudes out of 12 for that same championship, I wouldn't push too hard and, and, and be coming around this time next year and being like, man, I made some mistakes. You can't push too hard in week two. It's week two. So don't push yourself to win a championship in week two. I get making good, you know, that was a decent trade. Second and third for, for Damian Williams of trying to make a run, you know, try to get, and I had, you had an opportunity to get a running back, but like, just to reiterate, don't go selling these dudes cheap. Like don't, don't bail on Saquon for Jonathan yeah. Taylor. Like as much as fun as that sounds, you just lost yeah, well, value with Saquon. So let, We'll touch on that a little bit later, some more Barkley talk and, and kind of what to do in a, in a different category here. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on that real guy, quick and get your guys' thoughts. Um, all right, so next thing on the docket of what we think we might have learned, maybe, uh, are the cards good? Cardinals good? <laughs> like, is that – did have we, like – and furthermore, obviously, Kyler is, you know, already getting tweaked too. So who knows? Usually if you're getting MVP talk this early, it's not great. But um, <laughs> you, want, you want that talk halfway or near the end of the season. Um, but Kyler has been so good in his second year. Not that he wasn't good in his first year, but this year it just, it just looks different out looks there. Like and the legs, the legs are being used as more of a weapon instead of like a defense mechanism. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in this year and he's you know he's misses some throws here and there but he does have some pinpoint accuracy the legs are you know they're not quite on lamar jackson level but they're not far behind like Yo, he's so fast he's, he's dirty yeah i mean he's, he's so fast and shifty it's like and, and everything's so spread out it's just like the whole thing's starting to click you know you got you bring in nuke and nobody can guard him larry fitz is still a beast is he Bel- isabella starting to make some plays and and he's just rushing out of his mind right now, but he's making great decisions. Like, it's it's clicking. I mean, they beat your Niners week one before they had all those ridiculous week two injuries. And then, I mean, the Washington yeah. defensive line is pretty good, but this, the secondary is not great. So, it's it, I don't know how much of a parameter it is. I mean, you I didn't see much of that well, week one game. Well, how did they beat your boys? You think they're uh, – I mean, Kyler, Kyler beat them. Like, Kyler did what he needed to do to win that game. Like – they just, like you said, they just faced two really good fronts. So it's like the Niners still have a good defense. Obviously, Bosa got hurt, and the, and so did Solomon Thomas, and that front's going to, you know, they're, they're going to struggle a little bit here and there. Um, but that Washington front can't be slept on either. And, like, he was getting chased around, but he – he was in he was in control of those games and it's you know those are two of the tougher fronts in in the in the league and I'll stamp Washington on that already I don't even care like they're they're Definitely. that good already Definitely um but yeah no I mean he's been sacked I think five times on the year of facing those two good fronts um and you know this offensive line was they, they did a little bit of patchwork on it but you know it's not all that different um uh, from last year and that's five times is tied for with a bunch of dudes for like 10th in the league for the amount of sacks. So, you know, not terrible, but not great. Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, Kyler at this point, like, has he jumped over to Sean Watson in a dynasty ranking for you as, as far as quarterbacks go? Like, I know it's just week two, but I mean, show him what he's showing there. And now he's got, now he's got, uh, you know, Deshaun's old weapon over there, who's the number one targeted receiver in the league at 25 targets a game or 25 targets uh, in the league. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean not for, not for, for me, me I, but you got to I'm, I'm a Clemson grad, so I'm going to take Deshaun. <laughs> but I mean, I had a chance to take Kyler in a redraft this year and I took Deshaun and I wish wish you wouldn't have done that. Wish I'd have Kyler Murray. And if it, if I wasn't a Clemson fan, I would definitely be taking Kyler Murray over Deshaun Watson at this point. Like, yeah, it's like they're set up for success in AZ and, and freaking Houston. They just it's a different direction that they're going in. Well, great point there, Jay Wayne. It looks like the franchises are heading to two different directions. And the for me, it's the biggest point is, is, well, it does help to get Nuke and, you know, Watson 
loses him. So you're actually talking about the two quarterbacks who one lost the the, the best weapon and one gained the best weapon, but the other one, it, Kyler, he see, he he looks to run it a little bit more than than Watson does right the second, and um, that's just it's kind of play style. I mean, Watson is more of of a he's a dual threat type scrambling type quarterback, like you said, and that is. He's he's making up for deficiencies for his offense, and Kyler is using his legs as weapons, and um, and kind of like probably what Deshaun did maybe his rookie season, um, more of a just he came out there looking ten feet tall and bulletproof, and nobody could stop him. And it's Kyler so tactical right this second with what he's doing. I would definitely be he Kyler's over over Deshaun in a dynasty ranking for me. Yeah, how about Dak? Um. I could take. Da- I, Let's go, Kyler. I could, I could take Kyler over Dak if Ooh. I had to, just because of the consistent running, like that floor. I mean, Dak's not running it like he was two years ago either, and Kyler might not in two years either. Like this, you sure. get more, you you know. Um, but right this minute, Kyler is when you get that type of rushing floor, it. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. I mean, just the, the like he he put up great great running back numbers the other day, and you. If you throw for a couple hundred yards too and a score or two, it's like he's, you know, it's two players in one position. Right. There's a couple there's a couple quarterbacks doing that right now. Cam sure. and Josh Allen. Yeah, so Kyler's moving up the ranks. Are the Cardinals good? Actually, I'm not really sure how great they are. This is a great division. I think the division overall seven and one and the only loss is the Niners to the Cardinals. Um and you know, the next couple of weeks they play the Lions this week, which Lions get Galladay back. I think the Lions, you know, that game could be closer and and the Lions could win that game, but there's a decent chance Cardinals win. Then they go to Carolina. Then they go to the Jets. So, I mean, the, the, the Panthers could be 5-0. and oh, uh, or Cardinals. The Cardinals could be, excuse me, 5-0 and oh before we know it. And maybe being at that point, maybe a slightly overrated because of the schedule they had. But, I, you know, I don't think they're bad. They're, they're definitely uh, a team nobody wants to see right now having, having to face that headache of uh, Kyler Murray. So, uh, um, any, any other thoughts? Yeah, I can't imagine anybody wants to play the Cardinals, um, other than the Ravens and the Chiefs. Yeah, not that they want to play them either. Right, I'm just right. saying, like uh, outside of the Ravens and the Chiefs, I, at this point, I, you got to show me that the Cardinals shouldn't be a favorite in, against anybody they play right now. Yeah. Right, this minute. That 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 West is that NFC West is going to be fun all year long, just banger after banger every time those teams get together. Um, all right. Well, next up is uh, Tyler Higby. Is he uh, got to stay in your lineup from now on? From now on, because I know I sure as hell took him out of my lineup for week two. Um, not that this stat line was all that different as far as targets. It was four targets last week, five targets this week, three catches, um, and uh, this for forty yards. And this week he had fifty-four yards. But the big difference, obviously, being three touchdowns, um, is is. Uh, is he a lock for your lineup now every week? I mean, obviously touchdowns can be fluky, but sure. I thought uh, McVay was on a heater in this game, calling the game, and uh, it was it was used Higby. Higby was fucking out there just slaying in the red zone. Thoughts, Jay? I mean, I mean, yeah, you got to have him in your lineup. Like I, I got lucky and had to. I started him over Austin Hooper in the last week in one of my lineups, and I was like, that was fantastic. They basically got the W because of that. Uh, I'll definitely start him over Austin Hooper. Benched him in another league, and that was a bummer. So, I think, uh, I think yeah, you got to fire him up. Like, what are you going to do? If he's going to have the ability to do that, it's not – obviously, there's some regression probably about to come, but <laughs> if you can give me three TDs and that's, that's what's about to happen or could happen, tight ends – is hard out there for a tight end, and so yeah, fire him I, up. I, I got I got Higby on a team uh, where I picked him up off the waiver wire last year, and I have Kittle. You know, so I yeah did down the stretch last year. I was ended up I was after uh, Higby. I picked he did he had a good game. I picked him off the waiver wire. Maybe sat him again, and he had another good game. So and then the next two great games, he was in my flex with yeah. Kittle. You know, but I I, I I'm, unless you have. Kittle or I mean flex him if you got another tight end um, or you know or if your other flex options are good you know that's fine and you put him yeah on the well bench. especially this year man depth is gonna depth is gonna be the key more than ever you've absolutely. seen it absolutely absolutely so I mean I I have a I've 
I have a team where I had uh, Higby on the bench and I have two teams where he was in the lineup and, you know, it can happen. You, uh, any, you know, Hey, you throw Jared cook in there. Cause Michael Thomas is out and you're like, all right, Jared cook's about to crush. And he doesn't really crush Drew Drooper. He's missed him a time or two. And just, uh, you know, I, it's hard to put Kittle on the bench. Let's just say it like that. Yeah. If you can, if you're putting Kittle on the bench, that means you're very confident in some bigger name players who have more consistent production. The targets aren't there like they were in that stretch last year. Um, that's one of right. the things. That and you until were you kinda, see an injury, mm-hmm. probably won't be, and it'll he'll be. I'm fine if you're going to get me 54 on five targets, you know, without the touchdowns. At least I'm getting 10 from my tight end, and I'm okay with that. With the upside of getting touchdowns, that's completely fine with me. Um, yeah, I mean you're going to have to be fine them. with those types of numbers unless you right. have. A kid, a kid, uh, Ertz are better. Exactly. Uh, I swapped him out for Goddard this week thinking I could just get a safe PPR floor. Oh, and, I can't uh, hate you for that. I can't hate you not, for that at all. Wasn't good. Wasn't not good. Higby's back in. <laughs> <laughs> but last week, the week before that, Goddard crushed. Oh, he was yeah. just a – who, who, who they got to throw to? Like, right. what are the Eagles doing? Anyway. All right. So, everyone says put him in, start him up, fire him up. Let's get that's, some Higby going. That's a great example, though. The Higby versus like a Goddard. That's a great example. And now you throw a fan into that spot, too. I mean, obviously not many teams are going to have all three of those guys or two of those guys to, to, to argue about. But those, uh, Well, you might because Higby was kind of, you know, possibly a even a waiver wire, wire You claim. didn't draft. Yeah. yeah. Um, but like Goddard. A lot of people probably do have some difficult decisions to make with Higby. Jalen Rager. They Ragers. already have one. Yeah. Jalen Rager's out six to eight weeks now with a thumb injury. Who, I mean, Alshon should be on the IR. I mean, <laughs> this is ridiculous. He's taking up a bench spot right now. And so, like, the Eagles got nobody to throw to. And yeah. so you can't, I don't know why Goddard and Ertz aren't both catching eight, eight passes Sheer a game. Sheer volume. Because like they were Carson's back year. there running for his life, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. Boys need to be blocking. <laughs> sure. <laughs> at least one of them at a time. All right, let's go to the last topic of this category here. Uh, Drew Brees is this week's Tom Brady. Drew's washed. Uh, how you guys feeling about that? Because, you know, there was a point in time where we on this show years ago debated whether and how useful – how much you wanted Michael Thomas and how much you wanted Alvin Kamara because life after Breeze. And right now, it seems like they're Breeze's life support. Like, it's not life after Breeze. It's their boys are propping Breeze up. So, is, is Breeze washed? How do you guys feel about the, the, uh, the next couple of weeks of the uh, Saints and the, uh, the plight of the team here? Well, you compared it to, to last week, how we had, you know, is Tom Brady washed, dun, dun, dun. And, and is this the same? I don't think this is the same type of situation, right? I mean, Breeze, Breeze looked a little more stressed out than Tommy did. You know, Tommy threw some bad throws and had some pick sixes, and they lost. So that was why. Is Tommy washed? And that was an overreaction. I don't think this is that big of an overreaction, being kind of worried about Drew Brees. I, I, I don't have the extensive background on their offensive line, but I'm pretty sure they're missing some pieces. And they didn't have this offseason, which we thought that would be a, a beneficial thing uh, for the Saints. They're not, not as much of a hindrance, but it's still going to be a hindrance. And so then, then I think the biggest takeaway is that Michael Thomas is like a beast. And, and that's how much he impacted that game. Because you can just throw it to him and get first downs and move these chains every freaking play, basically, to Michael Thomas. And, uh, and that was a big thing missing him. I think, I think Breeze will get it figured out. I think they'll be probably fine, like. Yeah. It'll be okay. It, it was pretty bad watching that game and, and seeing him, you know, Against not be a fairly accurate, soft have... defense. Yeah. Well, it was but, their first game without Michael Thomas um, to go, you know, going in. I thought they would come out and look a little better, get a little more. It, I thought it would be a little more in sync with um, uh, Manny. Manny Sanders. Manuel Sanders has jumped around a couple teams here in the last couple of years. And even going back to his first season with the, with the Broncos, he hit off right away. Um, he got he came in midseason with Jimmy G last year and hit off right away. I just felt like Manny Sanders and Drew Brees would be rolling already by now. Obviously, it's been a different off season, but he you know he had no he didn't have off season with, yeah. with Jimmy G last year. Um, to me, I think Brees is still twenty yards and in. It's probably going to be as accurate, the most accurate quarterback in the league still. Um, maybe second or third. I don't want to. We don't have to have a contest on that, but he's definitely got a noodle arm. There's no doubt about it. Um, 
He was he he roared back, reared back, and threw some balls last week. Um, that I was like, okay, how how where is he throwing this to? And it was like a 25, 30 yard pass. Like he was looking like he was he went through the motions that it takes other quarterbacks to to make to do a 50 yard pass. Yeah. Because I, I was like, oh, he's going for something. This is a shot play. Oh, that he, he really had to put it, everything he had into it. Hips, shoulder turn, get through it, you know, for, for a 25 yard shot to, to Jared Cook. And I'm like, geez, man, that, right. that's that's way too much effort for if that's going to go if that's what you're doing for a 25 yard pass. Um, he's got his there's there's a reason why he knows where he's calling games next year. He's already got his contract. Yeah, they said they said the Saints had to talk him back into to playing. Like he want, he was ready to retire, and they had to yeah. Sean Payton had to say, hey, Wobo, let's just let's try to load this thing up just one more time. And then yeah, and he was he was basically out the door. So that's never really the best. He, he's he's. His, uh, his mentally, he well, he he's he got a foot out the door and all that good stuff. But I think, I, I mean, he's a competitor. He's, sure, if know, he's there, he's going to give it his all. Yeah, I don't think he's I don't think he's not giving a hundred and ten percent. He's just the 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 fuel gauge is on e physically. You know, like yeah, I, you, I, mentally, he knows the checks minute. He knows that he knows the audibles. He knows where to go with the ball. He hey man, we got to run to the left. I know he said we're going to run to the right. Look at this. Let's you know, throw it here. They're going to use Taysom Hill to try to chuck it deep and all that stuff, but he can't, he can't throw the ball downfield. Yeah. I mean, and like I said, to me, it's, you're missing Michael Thomas, who just has been life support propping him up. And if it, Michael Thomas and Kamara on the field, they're fine. Like he, you saw him dumping down to Kamara and Kamara could take you right down the field. A couple of handoffs to Kamara. That's half your offense. The other half is Michael Thomas and the other guys sprinkle in here and there. Good True. luck covering, uh, you know, cook. And like you said, he can distribute the ball where it needs to go. And he clearly, has an affinity and know exactly him and Michael Thomas know exactly what to do. Um, and some of it needs to be put on the fact that you let their, you know, the defense lets you down in that game as well. So it's not just all like, you know, well, the, the saints lose. So it's all on, all on drew Brees. Sure. Um, and yeah, no, he certainly didn't look super great. His stats weren't terrible at the end of the day. Um, but you could see that he, those guys got him on life support and, you know, Especially with no Malcolm or uh, Michael Thomas, Kamara was just on full display of how killing it, dirty that dude is. He is so good. He's so good at. We got kind of fooled into the trap last year because we saw him playing and he wasn't a hundred percent. That's maybe he shouldn't have been playing, or he's just a tough dude. But he definitely wasn't a hundred percent last year, and now that he is, I was I talked to Casey the morning after the game. It's just like he's the he's the lightweight Le'Veon Bell. He's he's unstoppable. He doesn't weigh as much as Le'Veon. He doesn't pack that punch in the hole like Le'Veon did when Le'Veon was Le'Veon. But he's everything. He's more Le'Veon. slippery than Le'Veon, though. Yeah, he's yeah, little, and I mean that contact balance is outrageous. He might be. He's a little lighter and he's a little quicker. And he's just um, as good a receiver. Yep, he's the new Le'Veon, but he's he's but he's a little little thinner. Slippery yep. when wet. So that life after Breeze talk. How, how about not so how, worried about it? Yeah, no. Three years later, <laughs> um, <laughs> we've talked about it since then and said we weren't super worried about it. What do you think about that grill that that uh, Kamara Kamara's uh, sporting? The thing is like he's, just a bunch of he likes micro pave diamonds. Grills. Yeah, he likes the thing grills. Sparkling. Okay. That's what, one okay. thing I always liked about him is he's always having fun playing. Like he he's out there smiling, having a good time. You can take that all the way back to Tennessee. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up that. Let's get on to rookie reports. Um, we're going to do some more deep, dive, like I said, deep diving into all the rookies, probably re-rank them a little bit here in, you know, week four or five, just at, at like quarterly-ish and get a little more in them. But, we, you know, we talked about a couple last week, the big ones. So we're going to talk, you know, a couple more this week, some big, bigger ones and some medium-sized ones and some smaller ones. We'll run through these real quick. You know, C.D. Lamb – out there he was our number one receiver as as most people did we had him going you know right after all of those top five running backs uh went off the board uh he was our six consensus six pick time and time again i didn't end up with very much cd lamb i got one um, share i got one share we thought you know maybe you know might not step right in and be great because there's so much going on but i mean right now it's you know Six targets week one, five catches, 59 yards last last week, nine targets, uh, six catches, 106 yards. Um, and it was just, 
it was fantastic. And, and he, he looks just like he looked. And just like he looked in college. I'm not sure it'll stay this week, every week. And, and, you know, Dalton Schultz is out there getting 10 targets this week and catching nine for 88 and a touchdown. And it seems like Michael Gallup is the odd man out, which is, is a little weird, which is kind of the reason why you were a little hesitant on CD. You thought, Hey, maybe Amari Cooper might need to, you know, end up not doing his whole contract and end up getting out of there in a year or two. And then maybe it's CD and Gallup, but I mean, it's probably going to go back and forth, but as of now, CD just looks like plug him, plug him and play him. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they were down 20 something points sure. earlier though. As sure. far as, you know, Schultz getting 10 targets and it's everybody get, I mean, obviously they yeah. need to, they need to throw the ball to CD lamb. Um, but with, with that kind of lead that the Falcons had on them right away, um, you just, that, you all, all you always, you're always going to see inflated targets. Yeah, that, that's good. Good, uh, point. and especially when you got a team, when you got that big a lead, the defense is just back up a little bit because you're like, all right, well, let's take away the home run play, make them earn it down the field, and get and and make them run a little bit of time off the clock. And of course, at the end of the game, then you know Dallas came back and ended up winning it anyway in a crazy, awesome fashion. But it was, you know, when you have that big of a lead early. The other team, if they have a competent system, which obviously Cowboys are have you know much above average offense, you know they're going to make plays. And the Dalton Schultzes of the world catch a you know nine for a hundred or whatever it was, nine for eighty, yeah. because the defense is backing up, just trying not to give up the big play and chew, chew the clock. Make maybe the offense will make a mistake. Yeah. Well, I get that there was more targets probably in this game because of how big they got down, but he still had six targets and five catches week one, which, I mean, this is just a, a rookie wide receiver with no offseason, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and then he hasn't even hit a big home run really yet. Like, he's, 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 he's on the verge of bursting one off, but, I mean, he definitely looks like the real deal. He, he looks like one of the more dangerous slot receivers in the league already. Oh, yeah, it right, doesn't look like sure. you mess. Doesn't look like you messed that pick up. Where was just don't mess the first top X amount of picks up, and then this is looks like you right. fucking yeah. At and, the very least, hit a double. Right. You know? And what he's doing with these targets, like he's he's finding soft spots deep in zones. He's he's going up and making contested grabs. Like they're they're manufacturing touches for him too. There's like end arounds. There's short screens. There's bubble screens. There's like all this stuff they're doing with him. Now he is only really playing in you know three wide receiver sets. Um, so when, when there's, when it's two, you know, it's still Gallup out there and Gallup's still a stud, but damn, yeah, but it's CD not working Lamb. out for Gallup right now. Yeah. But I, yeah, I'm you gotta, to, I'm scared to play Michael Gallup right now. I feel like unless if you got another option, I, I you know, I, I'm, I, he's out of the lineup for now. It'll be interesting to see when we revisit this week four or five to see where kind of everything's maybe evened out and balanced out a little bit, or maybe just CD's just been off and running and that's the mismatch that they like. And, you know, good luck covering all those dudes. Um, but CD looks really good. Um, That's the bottom love, line here, regardless of how much you're trying to start him or whatever. Right. He just looks phenomenal. He looks everything we thought he was. He looks like it in two weeks already. Yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm a little worried about my Gallup stock. Right, Not dynasty, you know, long-term wise. I know Gallup is a good player and I'll take talent and just, you know, have to wait it out and there's you know it's not like Amari Cooper's been injury free and you know we're already down a tight end and Dar Dalton Schultz I don't know if that guy's going to be involved in every game plan like Pick he was him just up. involved um probably Pick not like you said they were kind of maybe in that prevent and hey get everybody out of here and we're just going to keep checking down to Dalton Schultz not going to lie I didn't see every play of that game so I don't I can't tell the exact story of what happened there um I do know that the onside kick happened that's <laughs> oh that was so bad that was so bad <laughs> So I don't have to hear about that anymore. Ooh, one more thing right. I saw CD get away do that he did in college was get away with the cheat. He was pushing off and he was not getting called for it. This is what he did in college. I was like, I cheats a little bit, but he like, you gotta cheat. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. He's already can't showing that flag too. On, can't throw a flag on eighty eight on, on for the Cowboys. <laughs> flag proof. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to LaVisca Chenault. Uh, definitely, you know, wasn't quite as high end. A little bit more of a medium end asset, I would say, as, as far as rookie drafts were concerned. Um, was ending up in the middle-ish of the second round, which is kind of where we all kind of consensus had him. Obviously, when we did our rookie stuff, like we were saying, you know, him or Antonio Gibson, we all were kind of like, yeah, I'm going to take the running back for the most part. Um, obviously, Antonio Gibson ended up way further up the line than that. 
Um, but he was about a mid second rounder. We were all on him. Kudos to anybody who was saying, Hey, you know, this guy needs to be up a little higher still as things play. We haven't seen Mims. I still like, all, you know, Pittman and Mims and we haven't seen much Ayuk and all those guys we had in front of them. So I'm not necessarily saying, Hey, I'm ready to just throw LaVisca up there. But I would say that we, we kind of figured out that he was behind them and, and just kind of were like, yeah, we like LaVisca, but we don't love LaVisca. Like some people were outwardly saying, but I mean, it hasn't been super crazy out there, but I mean, he just looks like a brick shit house and it can do a lot of things. And I went from not wanting anything to do with this offense to kind of wanting a piece of this offense. And to me, this is classic coordinator face, John, uh, Jay Gruden over there. Just that offense looks, it's fun to watch. And Minshew is, you know, I've, I've been hard on Minshew saying, Hey, get, you know, get rid of Minshew in your super flex leagues, um, and get what you can. But you know, I, I don't know if it'll last forever, but it's fun. It's a hell of a ride. It's really fun. This offense is kind of fun to watch. Um, Boys are definitely having fun. So, you know, I definitely would, would, and would be trying to make Visca hasn't blown up. They have handed it to him a couple times a game and he's had, you know, three catches each game. Uh, So he hasn't necessarily blown up. So probably still relatively obtainable. Obtainable. And I'm, I'm pretty interested. Hell yeah. I mean, he just – he looks like a huge dude out there. He's like the biggest guy on the field. He looks like a running back. And then sometimes they hand it to him out of the backfield like a dang running back. Um, yeah. And he's, you know, he's making plays all over the field. He's going up and snatching balls out of the air. He's digging them out of the ground. He looks fast. They're getting – they're giving him handoffs. He's running over people. Like, I think he's shown yeah. you, regardless of the production, he's shown you that he belongs on a freaking NFL field. And – I mean, I, I think I'm, I think I brought it up like one time on a phone call, you Casey, like as the season and as the off season came to a close, I was like, man, I feel like I kind of missed out on not getting any Chenault. Like yeah. you could kind of feel it building up. And then, I mean, just as a perfect storm there with, with them bringing him in and what they're doing on offense and, and they got pieces now and Eifert's making a <laughs> playback from the grave and Minshew's just yeah, man, freaking – Taking shots at Ryan Fitzpatrick because of his beard, like just having a good time, just just there's, living there's it up. Targets, targets everywhere. They're spreading it around. I mean, Keelan Cole's back from the dead. Keelan Cole out there doing work. Uh, Charks, yeah. you know, a little slightly down from what people expectations were, uh, but Keelan Cole out there. He's they're they're you know they're supporting more than just DJ Chark. Right, and, and I mean, when they let go of Lenny, that was kind of like the nail in the coffin. The Jags are tanking. Right. And, uh, of course, they're not playing like it. And you, Gardner you know, certainly that, didn't get the memo. They didn't get the, – the whole team didn't get the memo. The, yeah. You know, beating the Colts was like they have an eight-point underdog to the Colts week one. And then the Titans are a team that is going to beat you up. And the Titans got out to a lead, and the Jags fought back. And Well, they were just, driving there at the end, and it was – he, he uh, Simmons on the D-line made a great play, got his arm up. Uh, on a Minshew ball when Minshew was trying to drive down popped and get either a field goal or a score, popped it up and picked it off. Got that pick, um, yeah. And so that was a bummer. But, yeah, man, they, were, they, were, they fought their ass off in that game, and there was no quit, and they, you know, made some good plays, and Gardner made some great plays, some fourth down pickups, scrambling around. Like, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's a good word for the Jacks. They're, they've been impressive for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, John, we're going to go with some Josh Kelly here. Almost went John Kelly, not to be confused. <laughs> like, uh, whoa. <laughs> Joshua <laughs> Kelly here. Um, at most drafts, he was kind of a late second, uh, early to mid third kind of guy, depending on, you know, a lot of people were kind of off this guy. He was a, he was a Jag running back and oh, he may be, jag. which I can't stand that term. Um, but he was certainly a favorite target of ours when we did, you know, third round, you know, or the guys, you know, after the big group of people like Chenault ended, he was always the next guy on the list of, you know, I want, we want to take a shot at Joshua Kelly for the reason of, Hey, the chargers, I don't think it's just going to be all Eckler. Like maybe it'll be Justin Jackson, but I kind of ran that experiment last year and it didn't work. Um, so then they bring in Kelly and I liked what Kelly had on tape. It wasn't anything super duper flashy, but he had, you know, decent speed and he could, you know, kind of make maybe one guy miss. wasn't the most elusive guy, but he was just fit. With the, once the Chargers got him, it was like, oh, they don't they need a guy like they don't have a guy like this. This is perfect, and he's come in and done nothing. But uh, I, I ended up with a lot of Josh Kelly. I think we all did. Um, and twelve carries, week one for sixty yards and a TD. And last week, 
obviously the yards per carry weren't very good, but 22 carries uh, is, is more or less what I was looking at. 64 yards, three targets, two catches, 49 yards. Um, so this is a guy who uh, is having a nice rookie report card. He's getting, he's got a B plus on that thing for sure. Uh, you know, well, with compared to where you got him, it's a damn A. All right. Because now you can ding. You can if you're struggling for an RB two. Like I got some leagues where I'm struggling for an RB two. Well, let me fire up Josh Kelly. I'll sure. put him in there. Like he, he, the volume was ridiculous last week. I, I don't care about the yards per carry. Whatever. Herbert's Herbert's going to get another start here, and they're pro, you know maybe they are trying to be a little more conservative again. Uh, Eckler was really good in the splits in this game. Um, so I, you know, I think Eckler. He's not obviously not just taking the role away from Eckler. No, but there's, see, no, but I rooms, mean, he, there's enough room for them to come. He is catching the ball well, like he's showing good hands yeah. and producing, and he looks pretty fast, and he's making good decisions, and he's looking like a huge steal. Where you got him at the end of a second or early third, maybe rookie draft. Like he was falling in all the drafts we were in, getting mad disrespected, and we were excited yeah. to have him fall to us. And uh, it's great, like just the. Hey, he's a running back that we all kind of liked. Scoop him up. Scoop him up! <laughs> Big Co, any closing thoughts on Josh Kelly? No, you're right. I mean, the volume's been there for somebody that you've gotten in the third round of your rookie drafts. I mean, what else can you ask? Right. You know, I mean, any time I mean, we talk about this in rookie draft season and from time to time, you've got, what, a 5% chance that you – somebody you take in the third round of your rookie draft being on your team in a year or two because they, you, you're going to rotate them out. And, I mean, Josh Kelly's out there balling out. I mean, you got to be super excited about your Josh Kelly. Yeah. Like Jay Wayne said, if, you, if you're if you in a rough enough spot and he's got to be your RB2, you could do worse. Certainly. Certainly could do worse. And you got to – you know, you had Tyrod, which you might lose a little mobility, but Herbert has got, you know, some DL legs there that are – uh that are pretty strong. So you still got the presence of a running quarterback, which is always good for the running backs. Yeah. And um, he brings that youth, youth excitement. You know, he's, sure. he's, he's, he's green as he can be, but he's, he's big, he's fast. He's excited to be on the field. He didn't think he was going to be playing this early. I guarantee it. And mm -hmm. you know, you got, he's out there running around and, um, that is going to open. I mean, he's got a big arm, so he and made not, some really good throws. You know, like it's going to open it, open that up, game. open up things a little bit. Tyrod has been a lot, you know, more conservative and not turned the ball over, which not that you know the rookie did either, but just saying brings that excitement level and um, you know, he brings a a little bit more uh, just spunk to the quarterback position. Not that Tyrod doesn't bring it, but. He's a little yeah. older now, you know. Ty Rods, he's not young anymore. Sure. And, uh, that the NFL will, will age you quick anyway. So uh, it's kind of cool to see see the rookie in there playing earlier than we thought he would be playing. Yeah, and maybe of you course, see a drop off on the week on the next Ty week Rod. where he gets the start and goes through all the motions. Sometimes we see that uh, with players, but exciting either way uh, for the rookie QB there and in. in Sit well, LA, I guess. Yeah, Herbert. All right, last guy on the list we worked from expensive uh, rookies to the cheapest. Uh, Darnell Mooney. Uh, you, money, maybe man. you drafted him if you had a if you had a really deep draft class. I'm not going to pretend like I know very much about this guy, except he was hanging around late and was just intriguing because you never you don't know who the Bears' third guy is here. Bears traded up for him in the fifth round with the Eagles. He's out of Tulane. He reportedly had a round of four three eight forty, so pretty fast guy. He's had three for thirty. Uh, in every game, uh, and then had a touchdown this last week. He's been in there on about 38% uh, snap share, which you would assume would increase, you know, a little bit. Um, but just thought this was a decent name to throw out there for some deeper leagues. And, you know, he's not out there in, uh, you know, many of our deeper leagues, um, but he certainly could be floating around out there uh, in some leagues. Not for redraft, but dynasty purposes. Yeah, for whatever reason, that Bears game was was one of the local games that I had to watch, which was kind of a bummer. But, um, like, he kept going to Anthony Miller. Trubisky kept going to Anthony Miller, and he dropped, like, every single ball. He didn't catch any of them. He dropped a touchdown. He dropped, like, a first down. But then he started going to Mooney, and that man was catching it, and it was, like, in big spots. And, and it, when I went to look at the box score, it certainly felt like it was more than three catches. And so for any rookie to come out and be scoring points like this, that, that, that was come, kind of coming out of nowhere, you got to take note and try, and try and scoop them up if you can. Yeah. That's why you're on the list. 
You made a list. All right, let's get on to the next category. We're going with your fantasy financial advisor here. So not necessarily buy, sell, hold. We're not going to do that every single week. I'm sure we'll talk about it a little bit with these guys, but just kind of assessing the landscape of the marketplace. You know, when you got to call your guy, you know, are you, can, can I get liquid? I don't know. You know. <laughs> um, all right, let's went, kick this. Go ahead. I just went liquid today. Yeah, yeah. Had to. All right. Did you get, did you get it all in gold? <laughs> It's coming in check for him. Yeah. Good as gold. All right. Uh, Aaron, Aaron Jones is the first guy I wanted to talk about. Now, obviously, this, you know, we're just kind of surveying the landscape here. He was RB4. He's RB14 in DLF's uh, ADP for Dynasty running backs. RB14 at this point in time. Obviously, a contract would really make you feel really, really good about Aaron Jones. Um, but at this point in time, there's 0.0% chance that he's RB14 unless, you know, he has a terrible rest of the year. Like, I've been I've been a little hesitant on Aaron Jones. I definitely didn't want him coming into last year. And then this year, I still – I would take him, but, it, like, it was probably around that range. Uh, and anybody who reached up a little bit or if he, he fell to him, like, this is just a gold mine right now. He won he, – he helped a lot of people win fantasy championships last year, and he looks like he's right back to doing what he was doing. And I mean, is, 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 you think he's moved up into the first round of fantasy drafts at this point? No, no diggity, no doubt. You got it. Round. Uh, you he's know, at twenty four have... overall DLF. He's got to jump up twelve spots. I don't think it'll be that hard. You had that, the back of that first round in a startup draft was. You could there was. 10 guys you could have got in there. It was, yeah, it was you know, very couple, tenuous. <laughs> yeah, a couple of four or five different wide receivers based on who you like, four or five different running backs based on who you like. Sometimes it was Nick Chubb. Yeah. Sometimes it was Joe Mixon. Sometimes it was Josh Jacobs. Sometimes it was, it was Miles Sanders and all those guys. And it's just like, I mean, Aaron Jones just blew up. And he's he's really, really good. And he's on a, and, and the Packers are rolling. Uh, 40 points two weeks in a row now and obviously recency bias he's right now he's the hottest sure. thing going um, if if Josh Jacobs could play the Panthers every week maybe that would be different um, yeah and I mean I, I still love Josh Jacobs I think I think Josh Jacobs is, is should was you know I was drafting him further up than when he was going as well like I, I'll gladly take him in the back half of that first round all day I, I thought Josh Jacobs was being kind of a little hated on a little bit as well yeah, we usually had Josh Jacobs up there, probably above Joe Mixon, and then Joe Mixon above Chubb, and then Chubb. That was kind of our. I think that's I kind, pretty I much had how Mixon we went in front of Jacobs, but in front yeah. of Jacobs. I mean, no, I, I mean, I've always that, like a. But sorry, go ahead. No, I just I've always been hesitant of Aaron Jones a little bit here, and now I think my I think the script has kind of flipped for me, and now I feel oddly fairly confident with him like he keeps doing it and doing it and doing it round and <laughs> yeah you know, i mean I'm, there was I'm, concern because you didn't know what was going to happen next year especially in dynasty with redraft i was fine with getting aaron jones obviously sure um because any running back getting any type of work in that offense is gonna just crush and so but in dynasty sure yeah we all had hesitance what's gonna happen are they gonna get rid of him they just brought in a second round running back which Go get A.J. Dillon right now. He's super cheap, and I would be, still be wanting to pick that man up. Did y'all see that photo where they blew up his legs? Where it's like, Big Co, you see this? I'm going to throw it up on the screen. It just, just made him look like, like a 400-pound dude. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking old <laughs> Professor Clump over there. Yeah. yeah. They just warped, stretched the photo. It's it's just – it was hilarious. I saw that anyway. But we wanted to throw A.J. Dillon out there, but but – yeah. But I mean, and it's and it's a short off season, so it's hard to knock AJ Dillon. But seeing all the work that Aaron Jones is getting, and then how much he's capitalizing on it, and then there's the blurb where him, his agent and the team are working on a new deal. When I heard that, I was like, "Oh shit, I don't have enough Aaron Jones." Like, because that was it. Will, will he be a Packer next year? I don't know. And now it's it's leaning in that way, and he's going to make it really hard for them not to keep him. And pay him yeah. a little bit anyway, probably not as much as what he wants. But I, well, who knows what's going to happen with that? There's still a chance that it doesn't work out. But it's still it's it's feeling like, yeah, 
Yeah. Seems like he's firmly moved into the first round for me. I feel decent about him. Like if you know, obviously nobody's selling Aaron Jones right now. It's not going to be like go buy Aaron Jones, but no, you don't buy. You can't buy a running back after right they now. score forty points. Mm-mm. It's to me, it's the downfield passing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you see a running back get a couple of looks downfield and look good doing it, um, just takes them to a whole nother level. You know, yeah. You catch you catch a you catch a big pass downfield and you're get, getting the consistent carries anyway and you're breaking long runs. It's just, he's electric right now. And, and is he, when you put all those things together, 40 point fantasy weeks show up sometimes. And it's, it's wild. Yeah. And that's not, you know, obviously the four, the forties are the high end, but like, I just sure. feel, I feel really good about Aaron Jones. All right. Uh, let's move on to, we, we touched on Barkley in the top of the show. Um, I own, we own uh, Barkley and probably the fantasy league that we all, that we own together, probably care about the least. Um, but we inherited, the cheapest. The, we, we inherited him and we kind of made a push this year to say, hey, we're still working with this inherited team. We've made a couple of moves, but you know, we're going one more big push and we got a bunch of old running backs and some older receivers and uh, so we made a push and then Barkley goes down. So now we're in the situation where, you know, it's probably t- that pushes us into a rebuild. Um, but I did want to, you know, we kind of set it off the, off the rip. Like I'm, I'm rebuilding the team. I'm putting Barkley on IR, but Barkley ain't going anywhere. Like I'm going to rebuild the team with Saquon Barkley on the, on, I'm going to sell my other pieces that are a little older and, you know, maybe are rising up in value here and there and trying to do whatever I can. Um, I'm not moving Saquon Barkley. Like, I'm sorry that if you had a really good team, that if you're, if Barkley went down and you were really hunting for a championship, like, odds are your season's probably over. Like, you, I mean, yeah, and, and, and in certain leagues, if the competition isn't isn't ripe and and good, yeah, you might be able to to persevere through that. Uh, or maybe you drafted somehow. You got JT this year because Barkley was in and out of the lineup, and JT's gifting you you know, a ridiculous amount of points, uh, potentially a game here. I, you know, there certainly are scenarios where it could work out, but like, just don't go mortgaging your future. And, and because, Oh, well, I need to sell Barkley because I was championship hunting. And now I gotta, now I gotta get rid of Saquon Barkley for nobody's going to pay you. Or if you listen, if you can give away and get a shit pile for Barkley and, and at least it's a good trade and you're getting fair market value, I guess I don't have too big of a problem with it, but most people aren't going to want it. Like nobody comes correct on a Barkley trade every once in a while. You, you see it and you know, maybe you do it, but. So if you were, your if you were championship chasing, would you trade Saquon for Julio Jones and Aaron Jones? If you had a good team. Makes it a little better. The fact that those two dudes are such yeah, high probably. scores, but I, I don't know. Probably not. Probably not. What do you think, Biko? And uh, I mean, we're talking dynasty, dynasty here, right? Yep. Right. Right. Of course not. The Aaron Saquon Barkley is about to be twenty four year twenty four years old in next year's, you know, next year's season. Um, we just said all that about Aaron Jones. If I could, if it was, if you would have said somebody, I mean, Julio's great and all, but he's old, old, old. You know, he's Julio is one of the best all time ever because he's so old. He's been doing it for so long. You know, um, if as long, I mean, if you if you told me he could continue his, he's like averages the most yards per game of any receiver ever. So if you told me I could get two more years of that guaranteed without an injury and Aaron Jones, I don't, I, I maybe, but I think I, it's going to take. I, and when you say if you can sell Saquon Barkley and get a shit pile, like I don't want somebody that was drafted in the third round and somebody was drafted in the fifth round and somebody was drafted in the ninth round and somebody was drafted yeah. in the twelfth round. Like, if you could give me Josh Jacobs and two firsts, now we're talking. Yeah, some. I mean, I just, I don't. I, I can. I, I'm not going to say I'm not selling Saquon Barkley, but it's going to be. It's going to look like he was he's just out a couple of weeks based on the trade. Mm-hmm. Not all year long. I mean, he's going to be 24. He's 23 years old right now. He's 23. Right. Um, he's going to be 24 next, you know, in February. So by the time when when football – and it'll be – next year it'll be like, hey, he got hurt early in the year. Remember? he? I, mm-hmm. I, I, I bet it's 85% chance he starts week one. 
Oh, I would bet it's higher than that. I mean, if obviously everybody heals, they make the playoffs. He, he's coming back at the end of the year. <laughs> Adrian right. Peterson came back after like six, seven months. So I think yeah. Saquon's in that on that level. Um, AP not that I think he should. He should do his thing. Too. But it'll be damn near a year by the time we get back to that, and it's a you know it's a whole lot better than this happening in December. So exactly. All right. Devontae Freeman gets electroshocked back at the coherence. <laughs> and <laughs> coherence. <laughs> That's a Seinfeld uh, reference in case you don't know great that one. one. Coherence. Coherence. Episode. <laughs> coherence. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess you could kind of go buy, sell, hold. Obviously, if you're competing, this is, this is great for you. You know, you, you, you could possibly get a depth piece. I see a lot of people saying, well, if Saquon Barkley couldn't run behind this line, what do you expect from Devontae Freeman? I don't expect a ton from Devontae Freeman, but I think he could catch some balls and, and get, get, you know, take hold of the backfield and maybe not be super great, but be certainly worthy of a flex start. Uh, especially the way the season's going and, and it's a war of attrition fantasy football is and you need some luck and Devontae Freeman could cert- isn't out of the possibility of having some good weeks um, from time to time if the Giants could get it together uh, just a little bit. So, you know, what I guess let's just more so go with it. If you were in a so-so team and you had Devontae Freeman, you kept him on the roster in Dynasty, what would you sell him for? Hmm, Something. Let me get something for Devontae for that, you know, like, it, Are you just – is like a third-round pick? Is that like just so he doesn't die on your roster? Like just to get it – I mean, Josh Kelly – it could be Josh Kelly. Like we just talked about him. Like you could – at least you're getting – you know, he was on – nobody wanted anything to do with Devontae Freeman. He was just sitting clogging roster spots up. Let me is get that, Josh like, Kelly. Is that just, is that just too, too little – I'm just saying like that third-round pick. Yeah, yeah, turned, yeah. You know. yeah. Any, I any mean, thoughts out there, fellas? If your team was real bad, I'd settle for a third, but – I think yeah, you could probably use him to I mean, do, do better. You're trying to do a two three swap if you can, but unfortunately, it's probably going to take. I mean, and, and Freeman just got signed. He probably won't be. It's going to be weeks before he's. I was going to yeah. say it's going to be two weeks before he's even good. Um, you know, acclimated and knows enough of the plays to actually get out there. If Leonard Fournette didn't uh, break tackles at the end of the game, he doesn't have 20 fantasy points. He's still getting acclimated to his team. He just showed up. So right. it's going to take a couple of weeks. To me, instead of getting just a third, I would if you know, I would say I'd like to wait until he, if he's if he can make it, if he can be healthy and look decent in five weeks from now before the trade deadline, you get a second round pick from somebody that needs a running back going into the playoffs. And somebody yeah, so like, if you're man, not- I, know, I don't, I know, I know this is a bad trade, but and I've made it myself going into the playoffs, and I just needing a, a third running just back. Wanted, you, got, you wanted to feel better. You wanted some more depth. Give, give me one, give me one starting running back that I can have on my bench going into the playoffs in case somebody gets hurt. Once you get into that, once you get past, and if you got a really good, uh, if you're in a really legit trade deadline ends dynasty, usually in some you, leagues. Most you know? most dynasty leagues have a trade deadline. And if you and if you're listening to this and your dynasty league doesn't have a trade deadline, then we all our home leagues because we wanted to continue to have trades. If you've made a trade, whoever you traded for, you couldn't put in your lineup if you were in the playoffs. You couldn't start them. If you wanted to make a trade because it's dynasty, make a trade. But the person that you put, got on your team in your trade, you couldn't actually put him in the lineup and use them during the playoffs because that's it's kind of messed up um, to be able to make trades in, in the playoffs and 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 put somebody on your in, in your lineup um but just yep. you know for the non-trade deadline listeners out there that's how we got around that at home so if you were sitting with Devonte freeman on your team and you're a mediocre so-so team you know wait and and try to let get some more life let him let him get out of the hospital he's back walking around he's had physical therapy he's got he's, an IV he's been electroshocked dragging it down the, he's, the hallway he's fully caught up with society and you know maybe you could get a little bit more i like that but if I don't you're think a good you're getting team it too, you need the bench, if, if I can get it too, team, sure. Well, uh, no, I mean, you're if he's playing football, you'll get if he's a starting running back. Play if he's getting twelve points a week, you'll get a two going into the playoffs. If before trade deadline, trade deadline, somebody will give it to you. If it's in the if it's in the um, if you got a short bench league and you don't really want to wait the four or five weeks for him to be starting and be good enough. I don't. I wouldn't mind take you know. Hey, take the third now. If it's you know FFPC short bench type stuff, take the third, get rid of him, and then go play the waiver wire with somebody else. All right. Um, well, now we're going to get to some some other guys. Just have a little fun here at the end. Uh, I got a quick redraft. Well, we'll see. I'll save it for the end. But, Scotty Miller had a bad uh, 
had a bad week too here. We were really hoping for a big Scotty Miller week. Uh, Godwin comes back. Any is there? Uh, are you, you trying to s- still maybe pursue a little Scotty Miller? Because you know, all through training camp, it was how much he was getting peppered and how much uh, part of the offense he was. A little bit of a bummer this week. Probably could have had a touchdown if Brady wouldn't have uh, underthrown him on the flea flicker there. Uh, but well, had no laces that, and that and, and a sweaty ball. And there was another drop touchdown. He it was a little yeah. bit hard of a catch to make, but mm, you got to make that catch, and he would have had a touchdown. Uh, and, and like you said, if he wouldn't have got underthrown on that flea flicker, it could have been two. So I think there is a small window here. Scotty Miller's stock's probably going up. I don't think the fact that – I think having those other two guys active at the same time was only going to help Scotty Miller, and he's he's a deep threat, and there's all this love, and he still had uh, six targets, five catches for 73 yards in week one, and then he drops a touchdown and gets underthrown on another possible touchdown in week two. Maybe go get you a little uh, cheaper money, Scotty Miller. How much yeah, I don't, to... I don't mind it. I mean, like, was that your next question? How much are you trying to give up? Yeah, for? yeah. What's this? What's this? I mean, Scotty, I'm probably still minimal. Like thirds? Is that what you're trying to do? I'll easily give mind. you two thirds. I mean, if I had to, you give two, two thirds? thirds. I just said one. <laughs> just one I'm third. I don't think thirds. one third is going to get it done. Oh, I think a third will get it done all day long. Oh, well. I think for should. some people it may, some awesome. people it might. If, Let me get yeah, it. I, don't, I wouldn't, I'm not giving up two thirds, I don't think. So, no, you can ship it. If I got, when you find a roster I got him on, send me a third. You can have him. All right. Jarek McKinnon, another guy who's been electroshocked back at the Garrett's. <laughs> uh, we got all sorts of electives. Those paddles have been busy at the end of this show. Um, <laughs> uh, Jarek McKinnon, about to get some run, got a little run at the end of uh, the game last week out of necessity. He got a run in week one, obviously. Um, thoughts on McKinnon? Is it, is it, are you, you interested? You buying? You selling? What are you doing? His stock's going up from here. Like, Well, he, hope you, you hope. I mean, I don't see any way around it. Coleman's about to miss time. They, sure. They want to they wanna, um, well, get multiple backs involved. That's really it. <laughs> Moster may or may not play this week. Like McKinnon could have the backfield to himself this week. Like this week, I'm down to like be him and fire him up. Jeffrey Wilson, and but he looks Jeffrey like he doesn't quite look back to form. Like he doesn't look like he's like super super fast, but he, he still looks look like really jet. quick. He, he doesn't look like the jet, but he still is really quick. Like he's quick for a second, and then it fizzles out. He doesn't have the long speed yet. And let's not act like he's not coming off two injuries back to back years, and so. <laughs> But he looks like he's fitting in exactly with what Shanahan wants to do. It looks like a great fit. Looks like why they brought him in to begin with. And if I can get any bit of that, and, and Coleman's out for six weeks or whatever, and Monster's questionable, and I know that the two backs are relevant, McKinnon's stock is going up after this week. I don't know what you need to do about it, but it's going up. Well, after. I mean, I, I agree, Jay. I mean, I think it's it's obviously going up a little bit. But anyway, just even even though I mean, you don't expect a guy coming off of two straight ACLs to look like the Jet, but he has put together some chunk plays, yep. um, which you know, if nothing else, brings you to still got vision to get things done. And at first, it it it, it lets you at least know it's not just like oh, it's a feel good story. And the Niners were like, well, we love this guy; he's a great guy, and so he battled back. Let's let's put him on the field a couple times where it doesn't matter. You know, um, getting chunk plays like that, it just uh, – it, he's he's back. He's not – maybe he'll never, ever be 100% again, you know, but he's obviously better than um, yeah. some some players in the league currently. Now, there's a player I'd send two-thirds for just to get to see if I could get that party started. Send in two-thirds for Jarek McKinnon? Yeah. There you go. I mean, would you, would, you give, would you give a two and get back a three for McKinnon? I would. So you you would just not take Mc. You wouldn't trade McKinnon for a two. Get back a three. Am I getting the two or am I giving? No, the you're two? getting McKinnon. I don't want to let go of the two. Okay. Jay Wayne, you look like you were a little more into that. I mean, it's RB twos are like hard to come by. To give up a two. Yeah. Um. If you that could, seem like a lot. If if you could. Uh, would you trade Devontae Freeman for Jared? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think so. Yeah, this dude. I has think so. Been, yeah. yeah. I've seen him on the field for two games. The offense is much better. And yeah. 
I don't know. Who knows? Wayne Gallman could be the best back in that backfield. All right. Well, we got two guys that two two more guys on the all electroshock team. Um, <laughs> Mister Reed is up next. Old Jordan Reed, another liar, liar drop for you. We're hot on the liar, liar tonight. Um, <laughs> There's no such thing as a weaker sex. <laughs> Where would Tina Turner be if she turned around and said, hit me again, I can put some stank on it. Rolling down the river, that's where. The best line, I don't know, there's so many good lines, but he's like, <laughs> she's like, well, what were you doing? Having sex. <laughs> it's like right when he can't tell a lie. Yeah. That's the thing, it wasn't even working. She's like, what were you doing? <laughs> Having sex. <laughs> trying to make partner and i thought like well i hope it squeal. was with someone really yeah. special that's the thing i don't even like her oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right what were we talking about the jordan reed. jordan jordan f and reed he's <laughs> back all these guys could be dead at any second they've been dead they've come and, back from the dead and how all he escaped we week two about. week two body bags so many dudes and jordan reed escaped yeah, the Niners were just had the Grim Reaper out there touching cats. Just <laughs> Jordan Reed was like, looked at Jordan Reed was like, you've done your You've time. been through too much already. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's fucked up. So, obviously, he was been on some waiver wires. He hadn't been super relevant in some some leagues. He was available. Some leagues he wasn't in any of the FFPC leagues. Me and Big Co scooped him up last week for a dollar. Couldn't believe the leagues that he wasn't available in. I obviously, was didn't at start rosters. him. But it's like, exciting to have him. And the, how did you have him on your team all this time? Any tight end premium trait? Would you would you, is this is, would you give up a third for Jordan Reed? Yes. Tight end premium? Yes. I would. Just for lightning in a bottle. I'd give up a third just for the idea of if he could make it just the rest of the season and then he retired. I don't give a shit. If he's healthy and he's on the field, even if Kittle's back in there in two tight end sets, what he can do in that Kyle Shanahan offense. I'll give you a third round pick for Jordan Reed just gambling that he makes it seven, eight games. Yeah. Let me Still get that fourth 30. back. Let me get that fourth just, back. <laughs> <laughs> give me a fifth back. Give me a fifth back. I pick um, up a wily veteran that nobody wants. It's you know, the, obviously the Niners don't have a whole lot of weapons right now. Um obviously when if De we don't even know if Debo it can come back this year. Foots can be fickle. Debo's already had foot problems, ankle problems. Strong alliteration there. Foots can um, be fickle. And the other receiver's a rookie. And now we saw Debo ascend as a rookie, and we think IU can do everything. Debo, kind of similar player, and was a real good scheme fit for them. But even in too tight, even when both of those guys, if they're back out there, Reed could easily have a spot on this team with two tight end sets. And you know Shanahan likes to get freaky with that play call and be all sorts of multiple and all sorts of different sets. And you just saw they have history. Um, he chose to come back and play for the Niners. He's getting right. He's still only 30. Um, this is a fantastic pickup for teams who Only got him 30. last week and, and this I'd week. I took the over on 34. Yeah. <laughs> uh, turn 30 in July. So just turn 30. Tight ends are just getting started. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously he's got, you know, it takes a bad shot and that could be the end of it. But, I mean, still as make long the as whole he's out there and, you know, the Niners are, you know, perfect, perfect setup for Jordan Reed. So that's a hell of a pickup. Uh, for anybody who just got him, who's everybody needs a tight end. So let's sure. not get it twisted. All right. Last one. Uh, I got Nikhil Harry on here. I'm not necessarily going to go down the road right now, but I mostly just put him on here because I don't want to forget. I got a redraft trade. I've rostered Devontae Freeman after week one just because I had, uh, I drafted Debo Samuel. It's a little bit deeper bench. So I s scooped him up. Would you trade Devontae Freeman for Nikhil Harry? Redraft. redraft? Um, I got okay. My running backs are okay. I guess if you need All a right, wide I'm receiver, good. I'm good in the running back. I mean, my receivers are are okay. Not not super. The top ones are good, but the you bench have to is start okay. three. You don't have to start three. Two I mean, flexes. I guess I don't know. I mean, it looks like looks like he's going to be getting a bunch of short area targets. I don't know that he can really do much with them. Uh, I mean, maybe he's, maybe he's. he's uh, I had it somewhere. He's pretty. Let's see here, real quick. Uh, <laughs> Nikhil Harry is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The thirteenth most targeted wide receiver in the league. 
There you go. Uh, th- through two weeks. Through um, two and weeks. Does he look super great before and after the catch? Not at all. Looks like a tight end. <laughs> Looks like he's in molasses, but he's big and physical and, and can kind of win, kind of win in that spot. And Cam looks fucking laser pinpoint accurate when he cocks back to throw that thing. That thing's coming out like a fucking rifle. <laughs> um, and who else do they have? I mean, Edelman's been in fuego. Like Jesus, I left. I left first year in a long time that I left that man for dead. He was always on my team. Sure. Um, in any sort of startup, but damn, that might have been a mistake because he looks ridiculous. And I mean. I like I, I don't love what I'm seeing from Harry necessarily, but I like that he's being targeted and that he's you know turn, looks like a good possession receiver. Uh, I'd probably make early. that trade for De, with Devontae Freeman to get him. Sure, if I have him in dynasty, maybe I go fishing for that first back that I spent on him. Hmm, I'm not probably sure you're getting get that, that right yet. now. Mm. Would you Would you uh, settle for a two? You gotta have you gotta have a you multiple a, you touchdown need, game first. Yeah, you need a, you need a couple marquee games where Harry's been in the mouth for some people's people mouth really for really like Harry though. Yeah, right. I think the Harry love is dead right now, and everybody's mad they didn't take DK. So I don't know. Uh, maybe not anybody on Twitter anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, so that's about going to do it. We're going to do one more segment called last week, this week, just kind of bringing back, you know, maybe some stuff that we touched on last week. Anything you want to add, subtract, agree, disagree, say I was wrong, say I was right, whatever you want to do here. Um, I guess, you know, we had all sorts of different topics. You know, I just, we touched on James Conner at the end and Benny Snell said how we love Benny Snell and God, I got a Snell. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) But, I, you know, don't get it twisted. If James Conner was out there, he would have done the damn thing up. And this week, you know, me and Big Co were talking and it was like, oh, yeah, ben, Benny Snell's going to get some carries. And it's like, name the time that Mike Tomlin's been just given splitting carries. was That doesn't happen. Like, James Conner was healthy. I don't know what the hell happened week one. Maybe they just thought they had the Giants in the bag and they were like, let's get this ankle healthy. Conner went out there and fucking ate. Glad I started his ass. And don't get – don't don't do – don't be getting all funny about James Conner. If he's healthy, he's fine. There you go. Everybody, every running back has bad games. What do you, what, what do you boys got? I know well, Jay Wayne. Go ahead, Bicko. I, I'll, I'll throw it to Jay. Well, I know Jay Wayne when I were talking and he, you know, last week I was like, should it be this hard, hard for Odell? And you, you guys were pretty confident in him. He has a good week. And then me and Jay Wayne were talking and Jay Wayne was like, I don't know how great I feel about Odell. <laughs> <laughs> Some reason, you know, post that game, I just, you know, Got a little bit of a weird feeling. I don't know why. I, we were big proponents of grabbing Odell. I traded for Odell in, in a league and, and drafted him in the third round of some startups and took him in redraft and filled up on more, the most Odell I've ever had in the history of uh, Odell. And then, you know, the first week he had a bunch of targets, but it didn't quite work out. And then the second week he, like, catches a touchdown. But, like, if he didn't catch that touchdown, it would be pretty – It'd be, it'd be pretty shaky right now. Like, I feel like he saved a temporary freak out with that touchdown. And then he got held on another one. He could have had two. Um, but, but he also could have been ruled down at the one and not got that touchdown. And it just seems Definitely. like the Browns look so bad week one, and then they get one of the worst teams, what it looks like in the Bengals in week two, at home on Thursday. And they just look great. And then they, it was still even kind of a struggle for them to win that game. Like, they should have won it by a lot more. And it just seems like I don't know that how much easier it's going to get out there for these guys. And I, the Browns worry me a little bit. Odell worries me in a sense that I don't know that he 100% cares just about winning. Like if he has one catch and they win a game, I don't know that he's going to be that, you know, excited. And that kind of bothers me a little bit just because there seems like there's some volatility. Maybe this is a week two freak out, you know, overreaction. And I don't know that I'm really going to do anything with this stuff with Odell. I'm probably going to wait it out. But I am like – starting to feel, I don't know, a little bit less confident about it. All right. Uh, I mean, there's definitely volatility in the Odell Beckham situation. Um, but he does have a couple of – I mean, he's got – they got Washington this week, so the D-line's not uh, not going to give him any breaks, but it, the secondary not the best. And then they play against Dallas, who definitely gives up points. And then they play against the Colts, gives up some points. So a couple of weeks in a row where yeah. it's uh, – going to be you know a chance for that I'm, my last week this week is on the same team I mean I basically called it to Nick I said Nick Chubb's going for 150 and two and 
he had that in the bag in the third quarter. And the only reason he didn't get the, to the 150 in rushing yards is because they gave the fourth quarter to Kareem Hunt, mm-hmm. who looked like a stud as well. Um, I, I see I, the J, what Jay Wayne just said was absolutely correct. You know that what happened on Thursday night because he didn't get it because he got the big play. You know that there was a a, a, a tantrum. It was pushed down the road. They kicked, maybe, they kicked maybe, the can. Maybe not. You know, I have liked what I've seen from him off the field in the last, like, season or two, and it seems like he's getting his mind right since he's left. Let me, let but me you never know. There's a like, tantrum. You never know. There's a, there's a tantrum. <laughs> there's a tantrum coming. But at the same time, I feel like they, the, they can get this offense worked out. Everything yeah. I said last week about the, you know, new offense, new scheme, Different sets, the different the Stefanski wants to run it different than what they had, what Baker was used to. This completely did the Freddie Kitchens is out of here. Worst off season to make these moves, and especially a quarterback who necessarily we're not saying his confidence is shaking because it's Baker Mayfield. He's probably had the most confidence of any player in the league, but his performance was shaky for sure. Yeah. And so I think that if I think the future could be just fine for, for Odell's fantasy production because that's really all we give a shit about i think the i think he could be just fine and, and probably if probably a good still i think there's probably a good buy window because um maybe not everybody's as keen as and and looking at it as hardcore as jay wayne like you said jay wayne he's easily could have been down at the one not had the touchdown and got out of there with you know what four, the 12 13 ppr points you know um less than go, that i think he had right like- 14 or 15 or something. I think he had 17 or 18. Okay. Um, yeah, 17 and a half. So there, there's 11 if he doesn't just get – if he's down to the one. Um, you know, I still think there's a there's probably a buy window because they didn't blow up. Um, I, I, I got no problem with it, seeing seeing if anybody feels feels that hesitation on, on Odell. Try to touch the – you know – just see what you can do. See, I, yeah. I got no problem picking up Odell and, and buying another piece of him and because he didn't blow up the first two weeks of the season. Right, and he was yeah, already I, a big discount to begin with, so he's got to yeah, be a little bit Which cheaper. is why we liked him so much. Um, so if they, I think if they can keep this run game front and center and be able to not get too far behind. I mean, week one, they just got – put up against a weed eater of, of of an offense and a defense. Nobody wants to see Baltimore. You get a great defense that's just physical and always on point and just kept added pieces. And then Lamar's, whole, you know, tightening the screws every chance he gets. So they couldn't really get, you know, and they were shooting themselves in the foot. And, yeah, they played the Bengals and, you know, but the Bengals played the Chargers tough the week before. So, you know, who I don't know where the Bengals stand. I think they're they're okay. They're not great, but they're not the worst. Um, and it's a division rival. Um, but if they can get it going and Stefanski wants to run that play action, if they can get that going, they want to target Odell. They want to keep him involved. I was a little worried last week. Um, and I'm still not super stoked about it, but I think if they can get that offense rolling and get that play action rolling, and then he can still, you know, he can still see plenty of plays without play action, but play action in a run game can only help Odell's. Uh, freakiness to get over the top of defenses and, and stretch it out for the long play. Freaky diggy. Um, Jay Wayne, why don't you take us out of here with a victory lap on David Montgomery, at least for a week. Oh, yeah, forward. boy, that man looked good. He looked like uh, yeah. wait, he can catch. Wait, he can catch. He can't yeah. provide something in the run game? He can't? Yeah. Does it look like he took That's... one a long way? It wasn't a long way, but he, he, he made that touchdown. <laughs> it wasn't a long way. It was like 25 yards maybe, but he looked slasher. He, he As soon as he caught it, he made a bunch of people miss. And he yeah. just has a good week playing hurt. Bears never did anything to show you they're wavering on him. They just gave Tariq Cohen a bunch of money, but I'm pretty sure David Montgomery like ran more pass routes than – uh, Tariq Cohen did last week. So I don't know what the hell the Bears are doing over there, but yeah. the moral of the story is David Montgomery, hashtag good at football, suck at haters. We're out.